Welcome everyone. Welcome to an Expo North Digital Short. We have a very special visual artist here today. Her name is Iona. She has a process that I also really admire and I can't wait to dive into. So Iona, hello and welcome. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, for sure. My name's Iona Leishman and I'm a visual artist and I live in Findhorn now after a very long time in the central belt of Scotland wow. around Blaine and Stirling. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. And I know you've had quite an interesting process getting to you to a full-time artist. So you, you started as, as in science, you were a nurse? Yeah, I did. I did nurse for a while after I had done an English degree in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, there's never any shortcut or direct route into our creativity and artistry. And I feel like I've been a magpie for much of my life, picking up um, the good, the bad, the ugly and the beautiful and um, seeing what really resonates and how I then process it. And for me, it's always been paint, That's beautiful. Um, oil paint. Um, yeah. And I add in lots of texture and, and texture and layers of color. And they're big, quite big canvases, aren't they? Some of them really are, yeah. some of them really are, but I really, um, I go from one extreme to another and I feel like I want to keep zooming out to the macro and into the micro because it, my brain feels very elastic when I do that. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So can we talk a little bit, because I know, but people might not, a little bit about your process because it's very unique and you've had some really interesting residencies. You were a residency at Sterling Castle. Yeah, I was. Yeah. So can you talk about a little bit what that looked like and what that was? Yeah, it was when my children were still quite young. My twin girls were only about, um, well, I know exactly how old they were because they were mm. born on the millennium. So it, well, they were 11 and 12 years old mm. uh, because it was a year's residency. I didn't want to be too far from home. Yeah. And so with a wonderful mentor, um, Kathleen O'Neill, uh, we approached Historic Environment Scotland because I wondered what was going on in the castle. Okay. And six months later, there was a residency for me. I was given the most That's enormous amazing. studio and I worked out that I was the first visual artist there for 400 years. Wow. I just want to highlight that. So you were the first visual artist there for 400 years. That's quite something. Mm. And I'm wondering if the artist 400 years ago was a woman. My sense is maybe not. Probably not. Probably not. But there was the the wife of, a, of a, a military chap. And she did the most beautiful watercolors, but she wasn't commissioned. She wasn't, um, yeah, she yeah. did it in her own time, but her sketches and uh, of life at Stirling Castle during the 19th century. Oh, um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, there were many other artists. There were so many talented stonemasons and tapestry weavers. True. But somebody applying paint to canvas, I worked out that that was in the time of uh, Marie de Guise, the mother of Mary Queen of Scots. Wow, that's amazing. And I, one of the things I really admire about your process is the, the depth of your research. You really emotionally connect with the stories and the information that you find there. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? So is that the first part of your process when you go into a space? Yeah. It really is. And when I'm out painting in the woods or when I'm feeling into characters, I it's that emotional grab just here. Mm. And um, it's it's it, it starts there and then it moves up rather than it being an intellectual process. It's heart led. And um, I, I go very deep in that process. And Sterling Castle was just the most incredible learning ground for me. Um, all the uh, I, I went there with a degree of trepidation yeah. for sure and I felt it was so fierce so male so warlike mm -hmm. and yeah. I thought I'm going to have to invent a thousand ways to interpret stone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually actually after a few weeks I thought oh gosh this place is intensely female wow. oh that's interesting yeah I'm I really, really felt the, the female energy and realized that had it not been for the strength and determination and calmness and 
forbearance and bearing of children and all the things that the mm. women did, whether they were wearing an apron or a tiara, yeah. was just immense. And I remember one particular painting I, I, I painted, I loved that, was called The Power Behind the Throne. Oh, can, you just, <laughs> can you describe it to us? It was all the women, um, uh, consorts, uh, partners, uh, wives, supports, yeah, that were actually, I felt, whispering power and strategy into the male ear. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. That's so interesting. That's so, so when you, when you kind of, because you are a storyteller, I hope you don't mind me saying that, but you are a storyteller with paint. Oh, I love that, thank you. Um, and, you know, so, you, so then you have the process of research and emotionally connecting with, and really listening to kind of the energy of what you find, you translate it to a vision that you have. And then what happens? Did you show it to people? How does that kind of third step in the process work? Well, when I was at Stirling Castle, um, my my process became very deep, very inward. And I all these paintings were emerging of people and children and horses and dogs and and life at the castle. And I said to Kathleen, I can't possibly show these to people. This is far too personal. Yeah. And she said, well, it's the most powerful thing you've ever done. So oh, no. really, really, this is this is what you have to show because before that it had been the landscape out there and there were very um there were landscapes that sold well and I really felt impassioned and connected with the place but this was of a different order saying please bring them out and actually I began to really make friends with my characters and really be thank them for asking to be seen that's so nice that's so nice. You know, that's a process I'll outline a little bit about Kabuki theater. And there is a part of the process that you have to ask the character permission to play them before going out on stage. So that's so nice to have that gratitude practice of thanking the subjects too. That's really lovely. Um, so what did it feel like showing the work? Um, I felt <laughs> that <laughs> old trepidation again, but actually... I, I learned to say, when somebody said, what, what is that about? And I said, yeah. well, I feel that I've explained as far as I can through the paint. And really, what I, want, I would love to hear what you feel. Oh, well, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. Um, and often um, people would come out with the most amazing um, explanations. They would see other figures colors sequences and it was that's a joy that's lovely it was a real joy it was a real joy and of course it is entirely personal really I produce something and you might resonate or you might have tremendous fear about it because a lot of the time it was about war and tragedy death separation um Mm. not yeah because I was asked to commemorate many battles yeah. And I, I resonated. I, I think I've had some very strong past lives and yeah. um, it was really a vehicle to, to, to bring out what I felt very viscerally. God, that's wonderful. It was in you. Oh. That was, you know, that I know that's so amazing. That kind of process is not just painting. It's li- deep listening. It's channeling. It's reading. Mm a place yeah. it's also then being able to translate that and share it and have storytelling yeah. and it, it's it's a really amazing process it's one of the reasons why I say I admire you so much I think it's it's so in, it's so interesting and it takes a lot of you yeah. and I just want to side note not to get us going down a different path because I'm watching the time but you mentioned a mentor and I just wanted to talk a little bit about how you feel about mentors, because I know they're so, such an important part of the process of being an artist, having people that you can learn from and go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was Kathleen O'Neill, who now works in Argyle and the Isles. And anybody who works with Kathleen O'Neill is incredibly fortunate. Mm-hmm. She did approach me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then... Oh, I remember the story. It was Open Studios in Dunblane. A mutual friend said, if you have time to go and see one artist, go and see this woman. So I went to see her. She came to see my work. She was looking to work with an emerging artist, maybe one or two. And I said yes. 
I I really mm. always look for or open my heart to a positive loving direction in my life yeah my heart is very wide open and mm. I hadn't gone to art school and learned not to regret that but still felt the need for strong trust guidance I could trust in Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we always, um, especially nowadays, we're seen to encourage ourselves to look at our own life like we're the hero along this journey. But we do forget that everybody is, and sometimes we actually are able to aid other people's yes. journey in a really profound way. It's it's about finding our mighty companion yeah. along the way, or companions yes. along the way. Yes. And, and she could see... In, in me, what perhaps I had overlooked or hadn't yet unearthed. Mm-hmm. That's just so, so wonderful. I just wanted to give a nod to that because um, the artist journey, although it feels solo, isn't really. There's all these people giving us gifts and guidance and it's just a really wonderful thing um, and so important. And so, okay, I am keeping an eye on the time. Can we talk a little bit about, I know, what is next for you? What what do you hope in terms of taking on a project? Do you have a vision for something? I know a lot of people listen to these digital shorts who are probably going to be wanting to line up to work with you from heritage sectors. So just wanted to give you the opportunity to say, look, I would really love this. Yes, right. Well, to take the first part of your question, right now in Fintorn, in my fairly new home Mm -hmm. here, I feel this is a huge settling in and reading the landscape Lovely. and tuning in with it and where I sit. I feel very much between the the east of Aberdeenshire here yeah. in Murray and then the west where my spiritual pool mm. has been much. I mentioned, Jessica, that I had lived on the island of Cana in yeah. a crafting community and from the 80s and that was really when I was able to witness the traditional crafting life and felt so pulled to that and so so entwined with the story of the Scottish diaspora Um, yeah I I feel very strongly about that I feel that um, well I what I actually practically do is go out and look and explore abandoned croft townships oh god that's extraordinary yeah that's amazing and these wee houses that actually held so much life so much joy so much hardship all of human life Mm. played out in a very unique way here in scotland and i feel immensely immensely close to that to that way of living and i realize i've gone very deep in my heart and my (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> voice when I talk about when I talk about these lives yeah what I'm doing is I've I've had quite a, a, a concentrated process a period of teaching at the moment or what I prefer to call it leading out leading mm-hmm. out each individual the youngest being 10 and the oldest oh. being 65 and um wow when I when I do that it really teaches me what I what I what I believe I know and yes. what I can know more of. Um, I've been painting outside and annotating and sketching and writing to myself. Yeah, wonderful. In, um, doing lovely little watercolors of those in of uh, bumblebees, and then writing about how diligent they are. Oh, that's so nice. That's so lovely. And they are, aren't they? They are incredibly di- um, diligent. And, I, and I've always involved my degree in English, my love of literature and the poetry of Norman McKeag. Oh, wow. The, um, with informing my work, with sometimes titling um, a piece of work will come from Norman McKeag's work. And I love that congruence, that, that, yeah. that flow from one artist to another. Yeah, that is, that is when I don't know why I'm getting that vision that you said was one of your first paintings. This is cheating because I, I, we talked about this, that of your dormouse <laughs> yeah. uh, when you were young. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is so lovely. That is lovely. Yeah, your, your, your superhero powers, you have many, but that I, sense of observation and that patience with seeing what's revealed. I, I really, I really 
hope that you get to do a crafting project because I want to see it through your eyes. I would love to do a crafting mm -hmm. project. And I was wondering about uh, contact to the National Trust for Scotland, actually. Oh, yes. About the island of Cana, again, because I lived there with the family. I was um, shampooing Highland cows, taking them down in the Calmac Ferry to open cattle sales. I've sheared sheep there. I've sheared wow. beer in the shearing shed. I've been out in all weathers and... Oh, it's in you yeah oh. yeah do you, do you know I, I I can I can already feel that in, in the works so I'm I'm so excited I want to let people know we're going to put all kind of your website and contact information below so people have an easy time reaching you and I hate to do this because I feel like there's so much more to say I want to I want to have a tour of your home and talk about the objects, beautiful objects you have on the walls and a little bit more about your work, but we do have to wrap up soon. So I want to end with a little bit of advice. Mm. So something that you found helpful on a daily basis that you might want to pass on or something that one of your mentors or someone said to you, mm -hmm. something that you've learned from your students and anything that you think you wanted to pass on to the Expo North digital short audience. Oh, thank you. I think what I want to say is it's such a circular process and I want people to really know that their voice is the, the original voice from their soul, your heart, and it matters. And no matter what it might look like to you, it's your original mark and the world needs that. I can't think of more powerful advice that is so beautiful, especially as artists, you seem to be on like a roller coaster of acceptance and rejection and trying to find things and trying to feel accepted. So I think that idea of that circular process and knowing that whatever it turns out, it's, it's original and needed, yeah. it's your dharma. It's, that's lovely. That's right, that's it. it. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute joy. I've thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you, Jessica. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs>